<laughs> all right, so we're going to review TV dads. I guess they're not all TV. Some are movie dads, and some are just, like, mythological dads, even. These are just dads, famous dads from multiple forms of media and mythology and history and so on and so forth. And uh, I've already put the ones I don't necessarily recognize or know enough about in a little category here of just like, who, who the f*** are they? I don't really know. Um, so we got, I love you, dad, which is the S tier, A, B, C, D, and you're the worst dad can ever. All those going on there. I mean, sometimes these are not necessarily literal dads. Some of them are father figures, you know, like Batman with Robin there. I guess actually that they have been made an actual father and son in some instances. So... There's actually two Batman and Robins on here, isn't there? I think I thought I saw another Batman and Robin. Okay, so actually in that instance, they actually are father and son. So I guess uh, I'm wrong about that because I forgot that they had the whole like Damian Wayne thing. But uh, anyway, yeah, not, not all these are literal dads. Some of them are, you know, like father figures, I guess. Anyway. And you got, why you got two versions of Zeus? I mean, I guess the mythological Zeus and the Disney Zeus are pretty different characters. So, so let's figure this out. First of all, are we rating these dads on entertainment value or are we rating these dads as like how good they were as fathers? Cause that's going to be very different. <laughs> that's going to be a very different list. You know, I think I'm supposed to rate them based on how good they were as dads, right? That would make the most sense, I think, in this uh, in this instance, this context. So let's go ahead and uh, proceed with that. We're going to rate these dads as dads. A lot of people have asked me, hey, where do you do your live streams? And the answer to that is that I do live streams called Abandon Hope every Sunday on the Pessimist Productions Patreon. That is linked down below. There is all sorts of other stuff on that Patreon as well. It is about $7 a month. And I think that we offer a pretty generous amount of content in exchange for that membership. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to check out the Patreon link in the description section of this video. A Godzilla is a good dad. I mean, he taught his kid how to shoot lasers out of his fucking mouth and stuff. And, uh, you know, I hate his kid. I hate seeing Godzilla have to fucking be saddled with taking care of some little snot nosed mini Godzilla, but whatever. He was a good dad. Mr. Incredible. I mean, he seems like a pretty goddamn good dad. You know, even when it was a, absolute misery for him to do he worked a, sh a shitty thankless job just to uh you know keep food on his uh family's table right now he did get a little bit uh waylaid by his own ego at one point that's true he's not like a perfect guy or something he's a human being i mean superhuman but still human attributes um and um uh, you know in the in the sequel which i didn't like but in the sequel where his wife has to go out and be the uh, the superhero, and he has to be the stay-at-home dad. He does excel in that stay-at-home dad role. You know, it's very difficult for him and frustrating and uh, challenging, but he does it. You know, he grits his teeth, and he fucking bears it, and he uh, makes the household run. So I'd say, uh, you know, by all accounts, pretty good dad. I'm going to give him an A. Uh, so you got Goofy and and Max here. Obviously, we're not judging Max as a son, although maybe we should. No, um, <laughs> Goofy, I don't know. He's a pretty good dad, right? I mean, there's another guy. I mean, he obviously loves his son. You know, he's there to emotionally support his son, would pretty much support his son in anything he wanted to do. So also an A. I don't know. Maybe I'm handing out these A's too easily. Maybe my standard for what what's a good dad is too fucking low or something. I don't know. I mean, I know there's some shitty dads on here. I see him on here. Hank Hill, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think he's got Bobby's best interest at heart, but, you know, he is kind of a little bit repressive. But I think when push comes to shove, he usually does the right thing, makes the right decision. And a lot of times, you know, he sees through the bullshit. You know, he knows when something's a fucking phase or a fad and sets his son straight. But there are times when he could probably be a little bit more permissive and let him explore his identity a little more. So I'm going to give him a B. I don't think he's a bad dad, but I don't think he's on that A tier. Uh, Bowser. I mean, Bowser's not that great of a dad, right? I mean, he's constantly putting his son in danger. 
He's constantly antagonizing Mario, who he knows has slaughtered like millions and millions of his troops and stuff, mercilessly like stomped on them and kicked them into lava pits and stuff. And yet he continues to knowingly antagonize Mario and put his, his, his progeny in danger of being killed by Mario, who is a merciless, ice-cold son of a bitch. I don't think he's the worst dad ever, because there's definitely worse on this list, but he gets a D. Is Goofy sleeping with Peg Pete? I mean, that's Goofy and, and Peg's uh, business. Uh, Logan, I mean, Logan didn't know he was a, a dad, right? Like, he didn't know he was a dad until it was just kind of, like, dumped on him, like, at a really inconvenient time in his life, too. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he does try to make right, but he's not that good at it. Um, C. Butters' his dad is a fucking piece of shit. Constantly belittles his son. Constantly fucking grounds him for no reason. Gives him pointless structure. Total hypocrite. Even though he himself is gay, when he thinks Butters is bi-curious, he sends him to a gay conversion camp. I mean, this dude sucks. He's definitely among the worst dads. I mean, Piccolo is not, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that they're talking about like Pic Piccolo's relationship with like Gohan when he decides to like kidnap Gohan and like train him <laughs> to be some kind of badass so they can save the world. I mean, he's not very nice. He's definitely kind of an asshole to Gohan and treats him like shit. But at the same time, it's because he's trying to make him tough enough to save the entire world. So, I mean, like, you really can't complain too much. Um, he's not all that nice, but, I mean, they do end up having an affinity for one another. I guess I'll give him a C. Zeus, from Greek mythology, is a terrible dad. He fathers kids all over the place and pretty much takes no interest in them unless they they do something to glorify him. So he's a total douchebag. I mean, Jack Torrance, you know, I mean... Uh, he, he uh, even before the Overlook Hotel wormed its way into his brain, he was uh, abusive towards his son. He's an alcoholic. And uh, once the Overlook Hotel does worm its way into his brain, he tries to literally murder his son with an ax. I don't know. I'll give him a C. <laughs> no, uh, he definitely belongs. He belongs among the worst. Um, Fred Flintstone, uh, you know, it's, it's weird. I've seen... A lot of Flintstones, like, I'm, I'm definitely not unfamiliar with um, Piccolo literally died for Gohan. Yeah, but that, you know, he, that's why he gets a C. <laughs> you know, he also repeatedly beat the shit out of Gohan and basically subjected him to, like, involuntary, rigorous torture. I mean, granted, like I said, it was to bring out the best in him or whatever, but, like, would you really accept that? I mean, no one accepts that excuse from Tiger Woods' dad or from uh, Michael Jackson's dad. You know, well, he, he, you know, he was tough on him, but he did it to bring him to the pinnacle. I mean, and it, it, that does seem to work, but it kind of makes you a fucking monster. So I don't know. C. I stand by my C. Fred Flintstone, like I said, I've seen a lot of Flintstones and shit, but um, I don't really remember there being any big parental moments from Fred, you know, really. Um, like, I remember he had a daughter in, like, later seasons and stuff. I guess once the ratings started to go down, they added, they gave him a kid. But um, I don't really remember how he parented or... What his attitude was, I don't remember shit about it. I'm just going to assume he was probably all right and say he gets a B. Gru from the uh, Despicable Me movie. Uh, I mean, he was, a, he was a good dad, I guess. He's B, B material. So you got um, Zeus from the Disney version. I mean, still not a great father. But definitely a lot of traits of the mythological Zeus have been retconned. So Zeus is not a philanderer in this version. He's faithful to his wife, you know, Hera. Hercules is Hera's uh, offspring. Um, he is full, full god, just has his godhood taken away from him. You know, whereas in mytholo mythologically, you know, Hercules is like between, you know, the birth the result of Zeus having sex with a, 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 you know, a human woman. I don't remember who exactly. And a lot of, a lot of Zeus's sex was.
sheep. So I don't know if that one was. I'm not familiar exactly with the uh, the mythology surrounding Hercules that much, but um, but I know that uh, I know that much. Um, anyway, uh, the Zeus from the the Disney movie is a little better. He's you know monogamous and he does have an interest in his kid, but he doesn't really even like explain any of this to him until he's already pretty much an adult or at least a uh, pretty close to adulthood. Does he actually show up and, you know, actually involve himself in his son's life. And even then he basically just gives him a bunch of cryptic bullshit. I mean, he does help him out. He does have an interest in him. So I can't say he's like the worst ever, but I think, you know, he's kind of like on that Bowser tier, you know, kind of an irresponsible dad, Bob from Bob's burgers, top tier dad, better than almost every other fucking dad that you could possibly imagine on this list. If you could have anyone on the board now as your, as your father, if you chose someone other than Bob, you're a fucking dumbass. That's just how it is. Um, t yeah. I mean, no, <laughs> Goku is a piece of shit. Dad. He abandons his family for long stints at a time with pretty much no recognition. He forgets his kids' names half the time. I think he forgets Goten even exists a few times, which, I mean, in fair, fairness, so does a lot of the audience. I don't know. He's not worst dad ever because he's not actively trying to kill his kids, but he's definitely on that shitty D tier of dad. Um. Tim Allen's character, uh, Tim, the tool man, Taylor from, from home improvement. Um, he's, he's all right. He's not terrible. He's not actively trying to fucking, I mean, I guess he probably belongs B because kind of how it's shaken up is, you know, this D tier is, I mean, the worst dads ever are dads who are actively like doing harm to their kids, like intentionally the D tier are just like hapless dolts that are doing a shitty job, but it's really not like malicious. Uh, the C tier is like people who are like their hearts in the right place, but they're just kind of fucking totally stupid about how to actually parent. The B tier is like, you're basically like a standard issue dad. You're not fucking anything to write home about, but you're not terrible. Uh, a tier is like, you're a good dad. You're very fucking supportive of your family. And you're always like trying to like come through for them at all, you know, at all in, in all things. And then A tier, the, I mean, sorry, the S tier, the I love you dad tier is uh, for Bob and Bob alone. And if anyone else comes up, up that is is worthy, I'll consider it. Cleveland Brown, I don't know. All of Seth MacFarlane's characters are sociopathic, narcissist pieces of shit who don't care about anyone but themselves. That's every single character he writes, at least in these animated shows. So I'm just going to assume Cleveland is no different. Addicts Finch, um, I mean, great lawyer, was he a great father? I mean, I guess he was pretty good. He like instilled good values. Yeah. Okay. I'll say eight here. Al Bundy. I mean, he, I mean, he's doing that thankless shoe, shoe store job. Like he didn't abandon his family. It's pretty clear that he kind of wants to though. I think he might even try a few times. Um, I'm kind of conflicted as to whether he belongs in worst or just D. I guess he's almost belongs in the middle, but you know, I like him enough that I'm going to at least, I'm going to bump him up to D, even though part of me says he probably deserves an F. Darth Vader. Um, I mean, he, at the end of the day, he does, you know, help his son out and stuff. Um, but you know, most of the time he's not being too nice. So I guess he pretty much... I don't really think he's redeemed by like one nice thing at the end of his life. Like, you know what, son, you're right. I'm going to kill the emperor for you. Um, Django Fett. He was a, he seemed like a good dad from what I saw. I don't know. I'll give him a C because he kind of puts his kids, he you know, puts a kid at risk, you know, and stuff, bounty hunter stuff, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, that is his profession, you know, what, what can you do? Um, the professor from Powerpuff Girls. I mean, I don't remember him ever doing anything like super fucked up or like messing the girls up psychologically. I don't know that he should let them be superheroes, but whatever. He seems, he seems all right. George Jetson. Um, I'll be honest with you. 
I don't remember. I've, I've seen a bunch of the Jetsons when I was growing up. I mean, I used to watch the Jetsons as a kid. I don't remember fucking jack shit about what George Jetson is like as a character. I'm just going to assume he's fine. He's like standard issue. Probably a B. Homer Simpson. I mean, let's see. So, I mean, a lot of the times when he doesn't come through for his kids, it's because he's just too fucking stupid. So I don't think there's necessarily maliciousness there usually. He does oftentimes like strangle his son. So I don't know. Um, I think mostly D. Dexter's dad. Uh, I guess he's a B. I can't think of a time when he really fucking like put his family at risk or something or like put Dexter in danger or like crush Dexter's dreams or anything. This is the dad from um, How to Train Your Dragon, who was pretty much a douche in the first movie, but not worst dad ever material, because he does come around and support his kid eventually, but only after his kid proves that, like, the dragons are useful. So, I don't know. I can't say he's awful. He's definitely, he's not like Darth Vader or some shit, so whatever. Indiana Jones' dad, I mean... Once they, like, get to know each other as friends and stuff and just as men, I think they get along well. But, like, he was, like, obviously a shitty dad. That's kind of, like, part of the point. So I'll say D. Odin, uh, he's all right. I'll give him a B. Kratos, I mean, I, from what I saw, it seemed like Kratos was actually a pretty decent dad. I'll give him a B. Randy Marsh, um... I mean, he does try to do right for his son, but he's so fucking inept and bad at it that you can't really, I can't really give him more than a D. Liam Neeson in Taken. I mean, he obviously goes the extra mile to save his daughter from peril, but that really doesn't show us like how he is as an actual parent, like doing some big dramatic thing to show that you truly care is not really as useful for the most part as actually being there. Uh, so I got to say, like, even though I know the character and I know that he did that, I can't really, I can't really assess. Mufasa, is that Mufasa? That's Mufasa, right? Um, he's good. He makes little fucking wise speeches and shit. And, you know, I think he probably should have been a little bit harsher to Simba, honestly, after Simba broke his rules and went into the fucking hyena lands. Like, I think, you know, it was like a three second lecture and then he was fucking playing with him again. So I don't know that really... I think he could have been a little harsher in that, but you know, whatever. He gets a B. Nigel Thornberry. I mean, this is a dude that constantly puts his kids in harm's way and, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of dragged his whole family along into his like weird lifestyle and shit. Um, but he's not like a fucking prick or anything. I'd say C. Peter Griffin is a fucking monster. He belongs in the, uh, the, <laughs> the the worst dad tier for sure. Rick Sanchez, I mean, yeah, he's terrible. He's a terrible father. Uh, he even knows it. Uh, Robin Williams, creepy ass dad who dresses up as an old woman to infiltrate your mom's household. And uh, I mean, that, I don't know. This movie has not aged well. Uh, he's He's awful. Uh, Grunkle Stan, not really a father, but whatever. Um, kind of a prick, but has his heart in the right place. That gets you a C. Thanos, I mean, you know, um, not, not great. I'm just gonna, I mean, I know that's controversial take. A lot of people probably feel like Thanos is the best father of all time, but I'm just gonna say, I don't think he was all that good. Um, Last of Us guy, I forget his name. I can't remember fucking for some reason. Obviously, I mean, he's, he's good. You know, um... He does a lot. I don't know. I mean, he even fucking says fuck the whole world to save his, you know, surrogate kid. I don't know. He's got to he's got to go up here. This is the dude in Full Metal Alchemist that merges his daughter with a dog so that he can keep his state alchemist license or whatever. Uh and then she ends up getting blown up. So I'd say he's probably not the greatest. Is that, I'm kind of squinting to see it, but that's, uh, that's the dude from Walking Dead, right? I, mean, I don't know. He seems all right. He's doing the best he can in the apocalypse. 
the guy from Jingle All the Way, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, that uh, fails his son at every turn and then tries to make up for it by... I mean, he he's fucking dog shit. He gets a D. I mean, this guy, uh, Marlon or whatever... Um, what's this dude's name? I don't remember. Anyway, he... Um, he he does he fucking goes across the ocean to save his kid. That's pretty fucking that's pretty fucking heroic. And before that, he was like overprotective. Like the biggest fault he had as a, a parent is he's overprotective. He cares too much about his fucking kid. Whatever. He gets a fucking B. Jerry, I mean, Jerry's uh, I don't think he's malicious about towards his kids, but I never really seen him do anything fucking all that useful for him either. He's like kind of a Randy character. He gets a D. Gomez Adams. I'm going to assume that he's pretty similar to the Gomez Adams from the Adams Family movies because I'm way more familiar with those. And if he is, I don't know, he gets a B. Uh, the dad from Dinosaurs. I mean, doesn't he like destroy the world pretty much and like <laughs> lead to the extinction of the dinosaur species? And then he has to like explain it to his baby at the end. I don't know. It's pretty bad. You get a fucking F. You know what? Um, Pete might be the only one that deserves to be up there with Bob because he's a fucking top-notch father. No one can deny it. Pete's good at everything he fucking does. He's the best fucking Disney character, and he's hot as hell. So what, do you, what more do you want? You can't fucking get better. So that's that. That's definitive. Them, them's, that's how the cookie crumbles, bitch. Gomez was S'd here. I mean, I did put a lot of other parents lower on the list for putting their kids in harm's way i mean but in the case of gomez adams like the adams family the rules are kind of a little different so maybe he does deserve that s tier but whatever i'm not reopening it so we're not going to relitigate this i'm going to stick with my original decision where'd you put tony soprano probably d i don't think he's malicious towards his kids but he puts them in harm's way with his actions if he actually cared about his kids, there's no way he would do what he does. I mean, he, he clearly cares about them, but not enough to to stop being a mafioso and putting them in, in, you know, harm's way. Justice for Al Bundy. I mean, Al Bundy is a great character, but he's not a great father. I mean, like, how are you going to possibly make the argument that Al Bundy deserves to be rated well as a father? I mean, he constantly puts his kids down. He's not, like, supportive of their ambitions or dreams. In fact, he tells them <laughs> that life is just, like, misery and pain and that everything is going to go horribly no matter what. And, you know, like, I don't know. He's, he's kind of not really all that great <laughs> father. I mean, <laughs> where did you put Frank from F is for family? Um, C. I put him at C. I think he's one of these dudes whose heart's in the right place, but he's just not. He was never meant to be a father. You know, he's doing the best he can, but that's not great. <laughs> but he is trying. Like, you can't deny. You got to fucking respect the effort, I think, on his part. You know? And he doesn't really put his kids actively in harm's way on a regular basis, like stupidly and knowingly. Al Bunny's just real as fuck. Yeah, but, like, part of being a father is probably blowing a little smoke, right? Being real as fuck with... I mean, like, Al Bundy basically is disappointed with how his life turned out, and he's made it his entire family's fucking problem. And because he didn't get his dreams, he shits on the dreams and ambitions of others. And uh, that's not really keeping it real. That's making your failings someone else's problem so you can feel a little better by putting them down. So Al Bundy is not a good father. I mean, he's a great character. He's hilarious, but he's not a good father. <laughs> like, you're not going to win this argument with me. I'm sorry. It's, he's, he's just not. There's no, st there's no standard, no reasonable standard of good fatherhood would hold up Al Bundy as a, you know, a venerated figure. He's very honest with his kids. He worked a dead-end job to support them, and Al was always there to bail his kids out no matter what problem they got into. Yeah, that's why he wasn't in the F tier. <laughs> like, he did do some stuff good as a father. He wasn't a total failure. But, like, bailing your kids out when they're, like, in deep shit, that's useful in a father, better than one who just says, yeah, fuck you. 
but like that alone doesn't make you a good father. When your day-to-day -day interactions with your kids are belittling them and saying you wish they were never born and mocking their intelligence and mocking their dreams and constantly putting your problems off onto them and pathologizing your own misery into them, like you're not a good father at that point. I can't believe this is even up for debate. <laughs> like that's silly. He's not a good father. I'm sorry. I didn't think this would be controversial. I think you guys are mistaking like he is, don't get me wrong, Al Bundy is identifiable as fuck. I get it. Like he's relatable. He's interesting. He's funny. He's a character that we all understand where he's coming from, but that doesn't make him a good father. <laughs> like, come on. Where did you rank Omni-Man? Um, this might be controversial, but um, C... I mean, he's another guy. I think, I mean, really, he's doing the best he fucking can in the context of, like, the hand he's been dealt. Um, and honestly, like, most Viltrumites would have just, like, the moment their son was, like, some kind of weak little, like, I have feelings for these earthlings and I think this is wrong and this is bad and, you know, you shouldn't do this. Like, most Viltrumites would have just fucking been like, all right, this is obviously a failed kid. <laughs> dead that's what his entire cultural upbringing was telling him to do and yet he found his own humanity even though he's zero percent human and rejected his entire culture to spare his son because he saw value in um in his son's empathy and that to me makes him not a good father necessarily, but um, it shows that there's real love. And so uh, he's kind of a good dad until he beat the crowd. I mean, Viltrum, the, like the, the customs of Viltrum would have had him go much further. So you can't really necessarily put that against him completely. I do think, you know, that kind of pre precludes him from being, you know, considered good. But um, at least there's love there. Where would Homelander go? I mean, Homelander does care about his kid. Like, he seems to genuinely love his child. You know, say what you want about him. At least at this point in the series, it seems like his, his love for his child is genuine. And not just about his ego. Um, see? How could Piccolo and Omni-Man be on the same tier? Um, I think it makes pretty good sense that they're on the same tier, honestly. Like, they're pretty similar in their relationships, if you really think about it. Like, both are extremely hard on their respective kids. I mean, one's a biological kid and one's, like, a surrogate, but whatever. And uh, they both put those kids in harm's way with their actions. I mean... Are we forgetting that Piccolo literally abducted Gohan and like beat the shit out of him on a normal like basis for days and days and like made him sleep out in the cold in the woods and shit like he did some horrible shit to Gohan like yeah you could say the ends justify the means for the good of humanity but that you know the question is not like did he do the right thing for the world the question is was he a good father can someone like me who doesn't like superhero nonsense at all enjoy the boys not only could you enjoy the boys, I think in a lot of ways, the boys is made for people who kind of hate superhero stuff. Um, I'm not saying you have to hate superhero stuff to enjoy the boys, but I think that if you do, it helps because it basically shits on every aspect of the idea of a superhero. It's just like points out every fucking thing that's like ridiculous about that concept and, and more so, yeah. Where'd you rank the stepfather from the stepfather movies? Um, I would have to say, you know, S tier for sure. I mean, he's famously a great stepfather, right? <laughs> Piccolo and Gohan have a sweeter relationship the older Gohan gets. That's true. Piccolo does kind of soften over time. So maybe he deserves better than fucking C, but whatever. I'm not revisiting it. I stand by my decision. I made my decision. Garth Ennis wrote the comic because he hated superheroes. The show is less cynical and better, though. 
Yeah. I mean, I love Garth Ennis uh, as a writer and stuff, but I think that um, subtlety is not really his strong suit. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I always love what he did with uh, with Preacher, but with the boys, it seemed like it was kind of almost like he'd regressed a little bit and they're like a more juvenile mindset. Not like it's bad. I like the boys comic, but it's like, I don't know. The, the show just like kind of kicks its ass. Walter White, uh, D another one of these guys that like, yeah, I mean, he's not like actively trying to harm his kids. Like some of those people, but he is definitely putting them in harm's way with his actions. It'd be pretty hard for someone as flawed as Walter White to be a good father. Walter White only became a meth lord to support his family. No small deed. Um, I mean, the show itself ultimately refutes that idea. I mean, it ultimately comes to the conclusion that Walter White was acting out of his own ego and did everything he did solely to gratify himself. Even if he had done it for his family, it would have, I mean, he still put them at tremendous risk and, you know, constantly risked being discovered as a um, drug pusher and cop killer and everything else that would have obviously hurt his family and did hurt his family ultimately. Like, he definitely didn't do his family any fucking favors. Like, they didn't... <laughs> They were not like, oh man, I'm sure glad Walt did this. Be a man.